Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 day for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to around the 22nd of September and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We extend GFS and ECM ensembles by around two around a couple of weeks. Uh, have a look at 7 speed 2 at the end of the video of the next four weeks. That will take us into the early part of October. Beginning in the uh, tropical Atlantic, it's all going on, and uh, we've got multiple disturbance areas, tropical storms, and soon hurricanes. So uh, I'll bring you up to date with everything that's going on there. There is a lot to discuss. Uh, the first video released today was weekend forecast. As always, on Saturday, got your weekend look at. Uh, so we're going to be getting very warm to hot again in the coming days. Temperatures going into the 30s, Celsius down in the south and southeast. Have a look at the weekend forecast and see how hot we're thinking it might get. This video is going to be looking to see whether this hot weather goes on in more extended range or whether we're seeing signs of autumn yet. And uh, we'll have a look at that very shortly. I'll tell you what's coming up over the uh, over tomorrow, rest weekend, uh, at the end of the video. We live streamed last night. It was a lot of fun. So if you didn't manage to watch it live, then have a listen back. We had a bit of a laugh. And uh, and yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was a fun live stream. So thanks to everybody who took part in the live stream last night. Uh, right, so here we go then. Uh, where to begin? <laughs> where to begin uh, with this? So... I don't know, really. Let's begin in the Gulf of Mexico, I suppose. Let's begin there. So we've got a yellow X in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so that one is disturbance one. There's a 20% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours with that, and a 30% chance in the next five days. Haven't got time to read uh, read the summary on all of these, of course. We've also got 19 just here. 19 is over Florida at the moment. That is tropical depression 19, giving maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour with a minimum central pressure of 1,004 millibars moving westwards at 9 miles per hour. Let's click on 19, see what they're forecasting 19 to do. Uh, so let's go here, and 19 is forecast to become a tropical storm uh, by tomorrow. So current position of 19 is over Florida, just here. 19 becomes a tropical storm. Uh, tomorrow and then gives uh, gives a direct hit to the Gulf Coast as a tropical storm somewhere between Alabama, uh, Mississippi and Louisiana, somewhere on that part of the Gulf Coast. No suggestion at this stage that 19 will become a hurricane, but of course it's moving over very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, so so it may, uh, you know, it may develop further from from like the forecast prediction at the moment. The prediction is that it's going to slam into the Gulf Coast anywhere from like Alabama to uh, Louisiana from around uh, Wednesday, uh, you know, late Tuesday into Wednesday. Right, that one's 19. Okay, where do we go next? There really is so much going on, but it's a job to know where to start. So we've got a yellow X uh, over here near the, near the Cabo Verde Islands. Uh, again, that one is disturbance free with a 30% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days and a 60% chance in uh, the next five days. It looks like that could well develop into a tropical storm. We also have this or this red X, I should say. We've got a red X uh, just here. That's one that's over Africa around three days ago. That's now moved into the tropical Atlantic. That's disturbance two. There's an 80% chance of cyclone formation in the next two days and a 90% chance in the next five days. And we'll read you what they're saying about this one. This is significant. A broad area of low pressure located several hundred miles southwest Cape of Verde Islands is producing a large area of disorganized showers and floods. Or development of this system is forecast. And a tropical depression is expected to form in the next couple of days as the system uh, moves generally westwards at 15 to 20 miles per hour across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic. I think that's going to become a hurricane. I think that one will become a hurricane. We shall wait and see. We've got Rene uh, Still, not Rene, not Reen, but Rene, <laughs> there in the middle of the tropical Atlantic, uh, giving uh, maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour, a minimum set pressure of 1,004 millibars, uh, moving uh, northwest was at 40 miles per hour. Let's click on uh, Rene and see what Rene is forecast to be doing. So, uh, Rene is forecast to stay as a tropical storm through the weekend, uh, then becoming a tropical depression uh, Monday and down to tropical pressure still as we go into like the middle of next week. Still there though, still in business as a 
chocolate depression, not chocolate sore, but still in business as a chocolate depression. There's nothing to say that it can't power up after after Thursday. You know, so that's just as far as the forecast is going. At that point, Rene is still in business as a tropical depression. So there's nothing to say, but Rene can't become stronger again. And then we have Tropical Storm Paulette uh, just here. Uh, so uh, Tropical Storm Paulette is very near a hurricane now. Just needs going over five uh, mile an hour stronger. It will become a uh, hurricane Paulette at the moment. Tropical Storm Paulette giving maximum sustained winds of 70 mile per hour with a minimum sense pressure of 987 millibars moving northwestwards at 16 miles per hour. Clicking on Paulette shows what Paulette has been forecast to do. If we go in here going to become a hurricane imminently. So as I say, it's only five mile an hour off hurricane status on the Severe Simpson scale. To get to category one hurricane, you have to have maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. This is giving maximum sustained winds of 70. So so any time now, it's going to go up to a hurricane. Looks like uh, this category one hurricane is going to move northwards to Bermuda, give a direct hit on Bermuda uh, like at uh, the end of the weekend into the early next week, and then moving maximum direction still as a hurricane into the northern part of the Atlantic uh, as a hurricane by the middle of next week. Let's go back and see what the uh, wind uh, forecasts are with this. So uh, let's scroll down. Here we go then. Uh, so, uh, yeah, like, like, uh, it's going to go up to Category 2, Hurricane uh, by look, but it's going to be a Category 1, high-end Category 1, as it hits, uh, Bermuda, by the look of it, and then as it passes Bermuda, as it clears away from Bermuda, pro Bermuda probably going up to a Category 2 Hurricane, uh, at its strongest, with maximum sustained winds in 96 hours' time, well, 72 to 96 hours' time, of 110 mile per hour. That's maximum sustained, remember, so gusts will be in excess of that, probably at around 130 miles per hour. By 120 hours it's down to a uh, down to 90 mile an hour sustained, moving back towards a category 1 uh, hurricane. It's all going on. It's all going on and we should keep you updated as this hurricane season progresses. We was always expecting this would be a big hurricane season and, uh, and yeah, it's upon us now. It is upon us now. We wait to see how much damage uh, is going to be done by this, uh, by this hurricane season. Okay, so coming back home, this is how the central temperature is looking. This is how the CT is looking provisional up to uh, yesterday, the 11th of September. We're standing at 14.8. It's an anomaly of 0 0.4 degrees above average. So not too far from average. Not been excessively warm so far through this early part of September. But but actually, the warmest weather is still to come. And next week, is going to see the CT rocket. The CT will rocket next week. And I think we could easily get to, like, easy going to get into the 16s, I think, next week. We may even get into the 17s. It's going to be a very, very warm week uh, to come next week. Um, beyond that, keep a lot of high pressure as well. The position of the ridge will change a little bit to allow things to cool down slightly. These are the 500 millibar. Uh, these are the 500 millibar height number grade charts from Penn State University for the next uh, week to 10 days uh, from Penn State University. We've got the East Andrew on the top, GFS on the bottom. 500 millibars is an area in the actual high pressure, low pressure. I've been moving around by jetstream running above. Red and orange extrapolate high pressure, blue to low pressure. You can see that with the ECM, we've got this area of above average heights. High pressure is centered over and to the north of the country in the September 10 day time but it gets us around 22nd of September winds will be coming in from an easterly direction easy winds so quite uh, quite anticyclonic lots of dry weather uh, with that reasonably warm still not as warm as it's going to be not as hot as it's going to be like uh, early next week but even so still above average temperatures I would have thought we have got some low pressure to ourselves that may be threatening some thunder into more summer parts of the country GFS is very similar again has that area of above average height centered over to the north country it is deep with the lower pressure to the south that lower pressure is trying to threaten thunder into the south winds are in from the east so uh so yes anticyclonic low dry weather especially for northern parts of the country in some 10 day time frame and uh and warm i mean not as excessively hot as it's going to be monday through to wednesday but still above average with the temperature uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation uh, ensembles look like this. We're at London today. Oh, we're sent to the red line. 30 upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off a little bit above average today. Temperatures generally on the up now. From now, right way through to like Tuesday, temperatures are going to be on the up. 
So here we go. Temperatures push up to between 15 to 20 degrees at 850 HPA. And then staying pretty warm, even into the second half of next week. It did come down a little bit, but still staying well above average, well above that red line. And even to like the second week, um, which is taking us into last week of September, still generally above average temperatures. Just very, very gradually, very slowly coming down but but it takes until like the very end of the ensemble graph before we get that ensemble mean to average so if this was like a protracted spell of very warm weather obviously the hottest weather will be monday to wednesday we won't sustain that level of heat uh, all that long given the time of the year that we are in um we can't sustain like 30 degree plus temperatures all that long at this time of the year uh, but, but even then, even after the peak of the heat, it looks like it'll be very warm, really, uh, right the way up to day 10, and possibly even uh, beyond it, actually. Protracted spell of warm weather coming up. Temperature anomalies from the 12th to the 20th of September above average, not just the UK, but from most parts of Europe as well. Precipitation anomalies from the 12th to the 20th of September drive an average away from the northwest of Scotland, where we are going to have a deluge in the next 24 to 72 hours. Uh, this is the latest wind flow map from EarthNolSchool.net. So, low pressure is sitting to the north of the country. Low pressure is up here and just there. There's like a trailing weather front going out into the Atlantic. That front will bring copious amounts of rain to western south of Scotland, the far north, northern Ireland. Have a look at weekend broadcast for more. However, further south and east, high pressure is taking over. High pressure will be taking over in the coming few days. And that's going to draw up a very warm to hot southerly wind. Uh, this is how the uh, UK Met is looking for Tuesday with high pressure to our east, low pressure west. We're sucking up hot air on Tuesday and temperatures will be going into the low 30s Celsius potentially. Still hot on Wednesday but we might spark off a few thundery showers. Then on Thursday the ridge changes in position. It's a subtle change but notice the ridge suddenly appears to the north of Scotland. Let's change the colour again. The highlighter ridge appears to the north of Scotland, which means that instead of drawing up the air from a southerly direction, we're actually drawing up the air, or drawing in the air, from an easterly direction, which will be slightly cool. You can see that coming around that ridge, the air is actually originating from right Scandinavia. It's not going to be cold. It's still going to be very warm. Um, but it will be enough to lower the temperature in the second half of the week. So if you don't like excessive heat, uh, you've got it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then after that, temperatures will fall down to more comfortable levels. Uh, very similar for Friday and then on into uh, the weekend. Uh, so this is as far as we go, actually, to Friday. A uh, high pressure is centred over the top of the country and uh, we're bringing the wind from the east. So it won't be excessively hot, uh, but it will still be very warm. Right, where do we go today? Let's go to GFS. So this is the GFS 6M. High pressure sitting uh, to the east country, low pressure to our west, draw to our west drawing up winds from the south. going to be very warm or hot on Tuesday and warm, hot, and quite unstable on Wednesday from some thunder showers breaking out. First day, the high pressure uh, like uh, between Scotland and Norway so we're pulling the wind from more of an easy direction that will start to cool the temperature down but still very warm, particularly so in the south. Uh, Friday through to weekend gets a little bit complicated. We've got this thundery area of low pressure moving northwards from Biscay. So how far north this gets depend, will depend on whether we bring rain into the southern half of the country. There's a lot of uncertainty about it. This particular GFS run does want to bring this wet weather into like the south uh, and into the southwest uh, as we go through into uh, sunny. By the way, don't we look at the uh, precipitation spikes, did we, on the ensemble? So let's have a look at those. So uh, this would be precipitation, part of the ensemble down here. Loads of dry weather next week. Some rain between around the 19th and 21st, and then pretty dry after that. Right, that's done. Let's go back to the GFS. So, uh, Sunday, we've got high pressure to our south and southwest. There could be some heavy showers and further storms down there, but the overseas is still on dry weather really through many central and northern parts of the country. Heading up towards day 10, high pressure over Scandinavia, winds in from the east, still a lot of dry weather, still warm or very warm, not as excessively hot as it will be Monday to Wednesday, but still above average temperature. Low pressure cut off around Biscay is trying to threaten some thunder showers into south at day 10. Uh, beyond that, the GFS then starts to move low pressure in from off the Atlantic, gradually uh, slips its high pressure away east. So eventually, as we're moving to the last week of September, the uh, GFS is beginning to hint anyway at something a little bit more unsettled, and dare I say it's something a little bit more autumnal. Maybe even hinting at going back to westerly winds uh, and low pressure dominating around Iceland by uh, by 28th of September, which is as far as we can go with the uh, GFS run uh, today. So yeah, the last week of September, autumn, 
it doesn't descend necessarily, but it does get a little bit closer to being autumnal. You see what I mean? In the last week of September. Of course, that's like uh, two weeks away. So it's a really, really long way off. Uh, GM, again, high pressure to east, low pressure to west, up those southerly winds on Tuesday. Could be two funny showers on Wednesday. Thursday, the high pressure to the north of Scotland, we're bringing wind from more of an easy direction, with lower temperature, but we'll still be very warm. That's Paulette, by the way. I haven't talked about Paulette yet, but Paulette is moving into North Atlantic, just there, close to Newfoundland, second half of the week. Uh, Friday, high pressure to Scandinavia, winds are in from the east, lots of dry weather, temperatures warm, not excessively hot. Over weekend, and again, high pressure is maintained throughout, so high and dry with the GM. This low pressure doesn't get as far north uh, with the GM as the GFS is taking it up to next weekend. Anyway, that's how it looks as we get to day 10. By day 10, which is the 22nd of September, possibly hinting at going a little bit more unsaid with some heavy showers of thunderstorms breaking out for England and Wales. Still the high stuck over Scandinavia, though. And then the ECM looks like that again. Same idea, drawing up those hot southern winds on Tuesday, Wednesday might spark off a few thundery showers. Thursday and Friday, the high pressure is over and to our northeast, bringing in the wind from an easy direction. Temperatures will lower, but will still be warm. Into the weekend, again, high pressure dominates. Uh, and, uh, and that goes on, actually, as we move up towards day 10. We still have high pressure in control. By day 10, just maybe hinting at a little bit of a breakdown, possibly something a little bit more showery developing, particularly so for England and Wales. That is 10 days away, and generally the ECM is keeping things anti-cyclonic up to them. This is rainfall forecast based on the ECM run from Tobacco.com. We'll uh, zip through this quite quickly, I think. Deluge, as I say, coming up across the northern and western parts of Scotland uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, eventually, that will clear away though, all of that heavy rain, but it probably gets over 100 millimetres of rain uh, to west and southwest parts of Scotland uh, from today through to around Tuesday. But eventually, it all gets out of the way. Then we've got lots and lots of dry weather, uh, lots and lots of dry weather for the rest of this week. Uh, moving up towards day 10, again, plenty of dry weather, just a few showers breaking out by day 10 across England and Wales, just hinting at a little bit of a breakdown taking place there. But that's 10 days away and up to then generally there is a lot of dry weather away from northwest Scotland. These are options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10 which gets us to the 22nd of September. 15 members of the ECM Ensembles have high pressure to our uh, to our um, northeast and bringing up like an east south BC flow going to be mainly dry and warm with that one. 13 with high pressure regime from the Atlantic going towards Scandinavia low pressure to our south trying to frame some thundery showers in the south winds are in from the east should be quite a bit of warm weather with that maybe a bit showery down the south. 10 with high pressure uh, over the country, somewhat lower pressure to the south. This includes the control and the operational run. Uh, 7 with high pressure pretty much over the top of the country and 6 autumnal taking the high pressure out into the middle of the Atlantic and bring down a trough from the north turning cool northerly winds turning very cool and uh, unsettled. But only 6 are doing that. Only 6 out of uh, out of uh, like 50 ensemble members are doing that. Generally the ECM ensembles are favouring late summer conditions to continue up to day 10, 22nd of September. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This gets us to the 27th of September. 16 members of the ECM ensembles are autumnal with low pressure over the top of the country. All change autumnal with those. 16 with still a ridge to our northeast. Weakening, yes, but still there. Probably still bringing a reasonable amount of dry and quite warm weather. 10 with high pressure pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic. Low pressure perhaps starting to come back in from the northwest, beginning to turn more unsettled with those. That includes the, uh, the control run of the ECM. And then 9, uh, seeing the high pressure slipping away to the south, lower pressure in the ascendancy up to the north. So by two weeks out, 27th of September, we might be hinting at going into autumnal conditions. We'll begin to transition anyway, begin to transition into something more autumnal in two weeks' time. Finally, CFSV2, so these are 500 of our heights, break it down to week periods. The first week period takes us take us from the trap to the 18th of September. The coming week will have high pressure over and to the east of the country. Low pressure will be out to west. Winds are being drawn up from the south. Going to be dry and hot with those in the week ahead. Uh, week 2 is the 19th, 25th of September. The ridge repositions to sit between Iceland and Norway. Winds are coming in from an east or northeast direction. Should be a lot of dry weather again. Uh, with that one, but temperatures lower as you have a change in wind direction. We go from southerly to easterly. Easterlies in September are going to be quite warm, but they're not going to be as hot as southerlies will be. So warm, yes, but not as hot in week two as it is in week one. 
Big change in week three. This is the 26th of September, 2nd of October. The high pressure goes further north and northwest. So uh, we've got a mid-Atlantic ridge to northern blocking, uh, really, with high pressure between like Svalbard and Greenland. A trough of low pressure sets up underneath it. So uh, that goes much cooler. We'll be drawing the wind from an east to northeast direction. Also goes a lot more unsettled as well. So that's autumn. Autumn arriving between the 26th of September and the 2nd of October. But that's when autumn descends if the CFS V2 is right. Um, then week four looks a bit bizarre. It's the 3rd to the 9th of October, still with northern blocking away to the north. We're losing that trough, though. So uh, what happens to the trough, I don't know. But I would have thought that's probably still going to be quite cool, still going to be quite unsettled there from the 3rd to the 9th of October. Okay, so we said that's probably in line with what it was showing yesterday in JMA Friday, which is like like we have a hot week to come this coming week. Still be very warm in week two, but not as hot. Temperatures lower. Autumn descends, so that's like a bit of a transitional week from from like um from like hot weather to something a bit cooler. Autumn descends in week three, taking us into the beginning of October, and October is is a much more autumnal looking month. That's what both the JMA and the CFS were hinting at. Yes, in JMA Friday, CFS is still showing that today. Uh, right, so so that's it. So so we're going to have hot weather though in the coming days. So Monday to Wednesday, we're going to be seeing temperatures hovering around the 30 degree mark in the south and the southeast. So if you like that sort of thing in late summer, then enjoy it. Uh, okay, so that's it for your videos uh, for today. So uh, tomorrow we've got the second winter 2020-21 update, part one. Logging at things like sea surface temperature, anomalies, what's happening with ENSO, uh, solar activity, uh, Arctic size extent. All of that sort of stuff will be included in part one. Now, the second winter 2021 update, that will be released 10 a.m. tomorrow. It's not going to be premiered. Uh, I'm not going to do premieres every week with winter updates, I decided. So just be like a normal upload, 10 a.m. release uh, thing uh, tomorrow. And they'll be live streaming from 6 o'clock uh, tomorrow evening. And we're going to look at the Talpeng's analogs for the winter of 2020 21. That's going to be a very, very interesting watch. I think it'll be very interesting. The analogs are already in. And we'll see what Talpeng is forecasting for winter of 2020 21 in tomorrow's live stream uh, from 6 o'clock. Part two of the second winter 2020 update will be released at 10 a.m. on Monday. Again, not premiered, just as a normal upload release. I think the next premiere that we do for winter updates will be like in the middle of the update. So, so I thought we'd have like like uh, like the first well, winter update would be premiered, which we did last weekend, of course. Uh, and then we would have like a, a nice run of just normal 10 year uploads. And then when we get to the middle update, which I think is going to be like the weekend of the 18th, 17th, 18th of October, we get to that middle uh, middle um, update weekend. We will premiere that one, and then we will premiere the very last winter update at the end of November as well, I think. So so it'll be like a premiere for the first one, a premiere for the middle winter update, and then a premiere for the last winter update. And then, of course, the winter forecast itself will be premiered uh, at the beginning of December. That's the plan at the moment. Anyway, I'll let everybody know if it changes. That weekend of like 17th, 18th, 19th of October will be quite interesting as well, because 17th of October is my birthday, so I'll, that's on a Saturday. I'll probably do a birthday live stream on the Saturday and then the premiere of the winter update on the Sunday and also on the Monday. That's the plan at the moment anyway and I'll let everybody know if that changes. Uh, but for today's videos, that's all for now. I've got to go off and uh, start getting uh, pre prepared, set up to, for uh, for the second winter update but I'll be recording later on tonight and you'll be able to watch that at 10am tomorrow morning. So for today's videos, that's all for now and thanks for watching.